now we're going to hear from Chris Messy, who is a um, engineering geologist at uh, GNS Science. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the team from Massey University, uh, University of Canterbury, Auckland University, and Monarchy Fenua. It really is a team effort and also I'd like to acknowledge the army of students that are helping us with with all of this work. So ex-tropical cyclone Gabriel triggered over 100,000 landslides across the North Island. We've actually individually mapped 91,000 landslides um, to date. Um, it's potentially the largest landslide triggering event on record in, in New Zealand um, with regards to the numbers of mapped landslides. Um, and our response required development of new landslide mapping and modeling approaches um, in order to collate the landslide data. And so this novel approach um, really provides stakeholders with a timely and sufficient level of spatial and positional accuracy about the landslides that were triggered, um, where they occurred and their severity. And it also goes on to look at where landslides could occur, did occur and might occur again in the future and feeds into the work that Paul um, was talking about before through the RiskScape project. The, um, the project has four main phases. The initial phase was the immediate response, which was to really help stakeholders find and source where potential landslides may have occurred from the event. Um, then phase two was to map the landslides from the event once imagery became post event imagery became available. And then three study a specific case study landslides where there was um, potential large scale impacts like Tokamaru Bay landslide dam and also some landslides in Auckland region. And then the fourth phase was to use the data that we've collated from the event with regards to landslides with other data sets that we already have to improve the landslide susceptibility and rainfall induced landslide forecast models. Um, so the, the project um, is continuing through into early next next year. We should be finished early next year. So this is just a timeline, multiple outcomes at different times along the way. So in February 2023, before the actual um, uh, rainfall actually occurred, we were providing forecasts on landslide um, severity um, to end users um, using rainfall induced landslide forecast tool. And we turned these into um, uh, numbers of homes that might be impacted, numbers of landslides along different sections of road or rail network. Um, then following the event, we carried out um, aerial photography from um, helicopters across the whole regions affected. And we were liaising with our end users and stakeholders to essentially prioritize where the mapping of the landslides should occur based on lands the risk to people and lifeline infrastructure. And that's what the image in the middle shows, um, which is the priority areas. And, and then kind of ongoing and currently still ongoing is the mapping of the landslides um, that were actually triggered by the event. And so these are being provided to end users and stakeholders as we map them. So they're updated um, every 24 hours and it's an ArcGIS online link. Um, and so people can, uh, who want them can just access the data as they're being mapped by our team. Um, and so then late in 2023, we'll then use those data sets to update our, our landslide forecast models so that our end users have an improved accuracy about where landslides might occur in the future with regards to um, different rain amounts. Um, this is just a vis an example visualization of the landslide mapping. So they're mapped by hand by a human, not a machine. And um, we capture a whole series of attributes that relate to the actual landslides themselves because landslides are not just pixels um, from a risk perspective, landslide type mechanism and how far the debris might travel is really fundamental and important. Um, and so this visualization just shows like an example of what the actual end product looks like. Um, and so if you look at the outputs, then um, we can have a raw output, which is essentially all the map landslides as they occur, that's live that goes to everybody. And then we have a QA'd set of uh, data which has gone through the review process um, that's currently ongoing and then like I say it's updated every 24 hours um, the science report um, essentially is a working document but it's a methodology that outlines what we're doing and how we're doing it so it's already exists but it won't be finalized until the end of the mapping um, which we hope to do by the end of the calendar year based on um, imagery availability um, and then we're currently 
um, subsuming those data sets into our landslide susceptibility and rainfall and use landslide forecast models, including both susceptibility and run out, so the full hazard hazard model. Um, I'm leading the project. Kerry Leaf is a co-lead and Janine Bidmead is our uh, project manager. But Tom Robinson at UC, Liam Witherspoon, Hugh Smith, Harley Betts at Monarchy Fenua, and plus uh, 15 students and another 10 GNS science folks are all involved. It's a real, real big team effort. One of the things that's really important to note here is that 50% um, of the landslides that we've mapped are house size or smaller in, in size. And, and so the image on the right kind of shows that quite nicely. You know, there's a big one, the image on the left, smaller ones on the right, which are more house size. Um, and so if we look at the Sentinel-2 differencing that was provided by Dragonfly Data Science, um, that missed 65% of house sized or smaller landslides. It also uh, identified a huge number of false uh, positives. Um, again, as per uh, the previous um, presenter who talked about the, um, the, the uh, sentinel differencing. So, so whilst um, remote sensing and machine learning techniques to automatically identify landslides are really useful to rapidly get an idea of the severity, um, you still can't replace the uh, human uh, map landslide distributions, especially when we're talking about risk-based approaches. Thank you very much.